Hi everyone. I think two of the most popular things which people ask God for and pray for is God's protection and God's guidance. Uh, I think often when, especially when we're in difficult times, when we're facing illness or when we're facing really tough decisions that have to be made, I think you know, quite often people will um, will pray, and even if they're not uh, particularly religious, and say, oh God, you know, please help me, please protect me or, or my family or whatever. Please help me to know what the right thing is and what the right decision is. Um, and, you know, when we come to the end of our own resources and our own knowledge, and that happens quite a lot when it comes to illness or when it comes to big decisions, then, you know, we turn to God's help. And th th that's a big question. You know, how does God guide us and, and lead us and protect us? You know, what does the Bible have to say about those things? And... As I was reading through this passage in, uh, in Matthew, that's the thing that really jumped out at me, is God's protection and God's guidance in, uh, in the course of events. And, and that's what I wanted to look at today from this. This is the, the last in the little series that I've been doing on the beginning of Matthew's Gospel. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to, to the end of the chapter. And I won't uh, read out the whole uh, passage, but if you expand the description in the um, uh, below, then I'll put a link to it and you can click on that and you can read it yourself. And this is just a, a little reminder, by the way, please do click on the like button and or the, the thumbs up button um, if you enjoy this video. And uh, please do uh, click on subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Um, so um, with that in mind, that said, these events happen after the Magi have, uh, have departed, it says we, we're told that at the beginning. So the Magi, you know, not that we know much about them, and you can see a bit more about that in the previous video. But they go, and then an angel appears to Joseph in a dream. And he says, you know, rise up, uh, take your child, uh, flee to Egypt, remain there till I tell you, because Herod is uh, going to search for the child and, and destroy him, to destroy him. And so uh, that's what Joseph does. He takes Mary, he takes Jesus, and he flees to Egypt and stays there until Herod dies. Now, appearing to, to Joseph in a dream is something which he'd done before. You know, God has sent an angel before to, to Joseph in a dream. Uh, and that's often, um, you know, the, the way that God works in, in the Gospels. And, you know, you might think, well, is that the case? How does God... Um, guide Joseph that then is that the case now you know does God appear in dreams and guide us uh, I think certainly God can do that you know I do you do hear tales from time to time of of um, people seeing things in dreams and being led to, to do different things I have to say I don't think it's a very common thing that you know I, I wouldn't expect God to uh, or an angel to appear to us in a dream you know you hear of it for example sometimes in in Muslim countries where people um, can't hear about Jesus, but they see a vision of Jesus in a dream and they, they turn to him uh, through that. That's sometimes how it works. But you know, dreams can be a way of God working. But I think the important thing is that God directed them in this very unusual set of circumstances and God kept them from harm. He directed them into the right place at the, the right time. But the, the bit which I, I find even more amazing is that the little line which uh, Matthew puts in, he says, this was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet out of Egypt, I called my son. Again, isn't it amazing that God hadn't just, didn't just guide them and direct them, but it was even planned in advance. You know, God had put a prophecy in the Bible several hundred years before the time of Jesus so, uh, to, to predict just this event. Now that's amazing when you really think about it, isn't it? How even well in advance, God knew what was going to happen and prophesied what was going to happen. Well, let's move on. So Herod, he, he does exactly what the, the angel predicted and he's mad that the wise men tricked him and, and went back another way and um, he orders the, the slaughter of all children or all um, male children under the age of two uh, according to the time that he got from the wise men so 
So presumably Jesus must have been a, sort of around the age of a toddler, under two years old by, uh, by this point. It's just another reminder that the, uh, the, the Christmas card image that we have of Jesus the baby with Mary and Joseph in the stable with the shepherds, with the, uh, the wise men all there, that, that's a wrong image. You know, that they weren't all there at the same time. The shepherds came on that night and then the wise men came some time later. Uh, I know we talked about this in the last video, but it's, it bears in mind repeating that so much of what we know about the Christmas story actually is comes from Christmas cards rather than from the Bible. And Herod, you know, this this is something which isn't really part of the Christmas card thing, is it? You know, the, the slaughter of children under two is... It's an absolutely horrendous thing to do. You know, Herod, the, the ruler, he was a um, not a good ruler, to, to say the least. And sadly, we still see this kind of thing happening today. Um, you know, that rulers slaughtering their own people sometimes. It's the kind of thing which happens. But yet even this, even this event, it says, uh, verse 17, then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard and weeping and lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children and so on. So you think this is a terrible thing to happen. I mean, a really awful thing. And yet even this was prophesied in the Bible all those years before, you know, hundreds of years in advance of this happening. This was in the Bible and this was predicted by God. And I think it goes to show that even the, the, the things which are evil, the things which are wrong, are still within uh, the things which God knows about, which God plans for, which God is able to direct for good purposes. You know, I'm not saying that God made Herod do something wrong, of course not. But actually that God knew and God, God used even that eventuality for a, a good result. And this is what happens because they, they go to, to Egypt. But then that fulfilled the prophecy. They came back and uh, again an angel of the Lord appears to Joseph and says, well, go and take the child and go to the land of Israel because those who sought the child's life are dead. But because Joseph, um, he's a little bit scared of Herod's son, Ar Archelaus. And so he... Uh, he's afraid to go to uh, to Jerusalem, um, but he he goes to the district of Galilee, which was sort of a little um, district in, in Israel to the north, which was a little bit obscure and, and out of the way, you know, perhaps outside of the the kind of places that Archelaus might be looking and might might be near to him. And this is why Joseph goes there. But again, Again, it says, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. That was again um, prophesied by God, that Jesus would be called a Nazarene. I think all the way through this story, all the way through this story, it's been within the control of God, hasn't it? And yes, you know, Joseph has been directed by by um, dreams of, of angels but even so it's still been predicted been prophesied all the way through what was going to happen and that it needed to happen in this particular way and God knew exactly what was going to happen and it, in fact it doesn't say that that um, you know the angel didn't say to Joseph oh you need to uh, go to a district of Galilee you need to go to Nazareth that wasn't what the angel said just said, you can go back to Israel. And Joseph thought himself, oh, I should go here. But even that decision was within God's control. He knew and he, he prophesied and, and so on. So all of the events of Joseph's life are uh, were, were prophesied before and you know, kind of fitted into God's plan. You know, God had a plan and God, God led him where he needed to be led. You know, God told him about the things that he really needed to know about. But other things uh, that he didn't specifically need to know about, God, God didn't have to appear in a dream and say, I'll go to Galilee. 
but it ended up he ended up in the right place anyway and God protected them all the way through you know it seemed like they were up against forces that they that they couldn't um, you know match that they, they couldn't win against you know I mean Herod and, and the army uh, for an individual you, you would see it would seem overpowering but actually that's um, even there God was able to look after them and protect them and you know, I think that this is the thing that when we're when we're looking to God's plan he's the one who leads us and guides us and protects us you know when we uh, seek God when we put him first when we look to do his will he does lead us and he does guide us in the ways that we should go and, and he protects us now at the end of the day nothing can hurt or harm us from a, a, a sort of deviate from God's plans even when it seems like the opposition is is overwhelming and this is what um, I was thinking about actually in in the Psalms no I, I've uh, I like to recommend reading a psalm every day and um, just uh, this morning I was reading Psalm 121 when I when I come to it here we go Psalm 121 the Psalms are great uh, for this kind of thing but Psalm 121 I lift up my eyes to the hills uh, where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth he will not let your foot be moved he who keeps you will not slumber behold he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep the Lord is your keeper the Lord is your shade at your right hand the sun uh, shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night the Lord will keep you from all evil he will keep your life the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore you know, that's a lovely psalm about how the Lord guides us he won't let our foot uh, slip or be moved uh, he will keep us and he will lead us and he watches over us all day and night round and you think this is the this is what happened it to Joseph and what Joseph found and of course you know these are special events but it's it's the same for those today who seek the Lord and seek his will God's protection and God's guidance is still there and he still leads us he still protects us and helps us and uh, we can look to Jesus as the one who who does help us you know that uh, one of the interesting things about this when you think about about this passage is the similar thing happened to Moses the similar thing happened when uh, when Moses was born then Pharaoh ordered that all of the all of the babies be killed uh, but uh, of course Moses wasn't killed now you remember the story about the Moses basket and in the Nile and so on if you don't remember that then uh, we'll talk about that some other time but Moses was preserved even though other children uh, were killed and um, this is the wonderful thing that you know, God preserves his people and God does lead and God does guide nothing can can change his plans and just as uh, Moses was the one who led uh, God's people out into the promised land Jesus is the one who safely and securely and infallibly leads us into the the promised land into heaven into the the new creation to be with God forever and Jesus is the one who does that as like the new Moses uh, and this is what this passage is, is saying so it's a I think it's a great passage to think about just thinking about the way that God guides us and God leads us even when it seems like the opposition is overwhelming that God still has a plan now as it says in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 you know, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord who are called according to his purpose and you know that when we are called by God when we loved him when we seek him that at the end of the day nothing can happen or nothing will ever happen that will take us away from his plans and his purposes for us now if we seek him and if we ask him then he will always lead us he will always help us and guide us in every circumstance and I think this is a great message to uh, to remember from um, every day really to remember that God is is there guiding and, and leading and protecting so I hope that you found this video helpful um, again like I said please do like 
um, please do subscribe and uh, I hope to see you again for another one of these videos very soon. God bless.